Hi guys. It is another frosty midwinter night here in late November in the uh, collapse of global industrial civilization. It is the eve of Thanksgiving 2022 where we all count our blessings here, uh, <laughs> here in the 2020s. Counting our blessings, looking for things to be thankful for. Oh yeah. Uh, so that would make it Wednesday night, November 23rd, 2022. So, uh, guys, I uh, on one level, I, I kind of apologize for uh, bringing you yet another, another uh, overpopulation video. But for people who don't understand this, if, if, if someone were to ask me, to sum up, what is your channel about in, in one word? It would probably be overpopulation or population, the O word or the P word, uh, because I just happen to think after studying the issue uh, for 63 years now, that overpopulation, the global population of humans is the number one, the number one uh, cause of everything bad going on on this planet. The, the, to have, to, to be talking about any, anything to do with the collapse of, from the collapse of civilization, the collapse of the climate, the collapse of every one of our fellow earthlings, the collapse of the planet, uh, it, without talking about overpopulation is like talking about ham, like talking about McDonald's without mentioning the word hamburger. And uh, I am happy to announce that I made a wrong call uh, a few days ago when I said that after th this BS about. Uh, uh, the, you know, the world hitting 8 billion people uh, on November 15th, uh, what, eight days ago, uh, whatever, uh, that after one or two days that you would never hear the subject of overpopulation or population mentioned again. And I am thrilled to say uh, that the subject has actually uh, been alive for eight days and are unbelievably uh, hearing some intelligent conversation in the mainstream media. My dear sweet sister and I think two of my alert readers sent me this story, uh, is it from the New Yorker or the New York Times, this story about Les Unite uh, this fellow, the head of the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement, and they did not just trash talk the guy. Uh, I, I mean, I was thinking about reading that story, but I have, in, I have had the pleasure of interviewing Les Unite, uh, and you can find that you, you know, let's unite, uh, but it's K-N-I-G-H-T. You can find my interview with Les somewhere uh, here if you want to find out about Les and the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement, which I am a proud uh, member and supporter and cheerleader of, the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement, where we all just figure out that humans, it's time for us to go. And the way to do this is to not breed. And the way, the best way to not breed is to get yourself sterilized. But anyway, I think we know that. But I'm, but anyway, uh, you can find that story or go listen to my uh, go listen to my uh, interview with Les. But anyway, we're going to go over here, right here in the mainstream media, from this outfit over in England called The Independent. The Independent. And I must say, they are, uh, with this one, I do not believe it's some intelligent commentary. 
This was written by somebody named Donna Chad McCarthy. So I don't know whether Donna Chad McCarthy is a guest columnist or is just a regular reporter for the Independent, but good for Donna Chad and good for the Independent right here and good for Yahoo News for uh, publishing this. Why is nobody willing to say the P word? Of course, I would call it the O word, but the P word works too. Why is nobody willing to say the P word? Yes, and then they have this picture. I uh, Anyway, we've all seen these pictures of, you know, that that is a... I don't even know what it's a picture of. It was taken in India, uh, <laughs> where you're looking at, what, about 2,000 people. Uh, all right, take it away. There's some intelligent commentary. <clears throat> I love this opening sentence. With extraordinarily apt timing, the terrifying, the terrifying global 8 billion people day arrived in the middle of the failed, in the middle of the failed COP27 in Egypt. And it came just 11 years after the previous 7 billion day in 2011. And the UN predicts we will pass 10 billion day by 2080. We're adding 80 million, 80 million people to the global population annually. That is just under the population of Britain, Belgium, and Ireland combined. All of these people, all of these people, not just the, uh, not just the rich honkies, all. The definition of all is everyone is 100%. Is the definition of all 100% of these people will require land, water, and other resources to feed, house, wash, transport, clothe, and more. Combined with, combined with exploding consumption, the population explosion is pushing humanity over the climate and ecological crises cliffs. Thank you very much. This is not an either or, that, that this whole false debate about overpopulation versus overconsumption. It is not an either or. It is a both and. It's like, you know, this debate about overpopulation versus overconsumption is like arguing what is more important, your heart or your lungs? Okay? It's not like you can either, you know, Get rid of your heart and your lungs will keep you alive or vice versa. Okay? This has nothing to do with either or. It is both and. And then, of course, Paul Ehrlich and I would throw in technology to make it not a two-headed snake, but three-headed snake. Thank you. Right here, combined with exploding consumption, the population is pushing humanity over the climate and ecological crises cliffs. Uh, that uh, in, in one sentence, uh, summing up uh, what I've been saying for years, uh, all of this talk about climate this, carbon that, uh, and, and all of that's fine to be talking about. But there, there are a bunch of other cliffs 
There are all kinds of other cliffs uh, that too damn many people eating too damn much stuff on this planet is pushing humanity and every other species of earthling we share the planet with over a bunch of cliffs. It's not one cliff. It's, it, it, it's cliffs as far as you can see. Climate is one of the cliffs. I, I understand that uh, most people do not understand this. But anyway, thank you for clarifying that. The draft intergovernmental panel on climate change report in April 2022 stated that, quote, globally, gross domestic product per capita and population growth hmm, remained the strongest drivers of CO2 emissions from fossil fuel combustion in the last decade, close quote. Between 2010 and 2019, growth in GDP <coughs> per capita, meaning overconsumption, raised emissions by 2.3% annually and population growth raised emissions by 1.2% a year. So why is there a deathly silence from the climate movement and at COP27 on the P word, on the P word, the issue is a minefield due to past authoritarian crackdowns on women's fertility in countries such as India and China, and because a minority on the left scream eco-fascism the moment the subject is mentioned. Yes, I would make a comment about eco-fascists and eco-Nazis, but I gotta remember what channel I'm on. So, anyway, but now, 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 now here is, is where I, I, I got disappointed with Donna Chad. I was, I was cheering on Donna Chad McCarthy, whoever that is, up until this sentence. And here we go. And, and, and I'm and 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 and, and I'm time. It's time to hit the bullshit detected button on this. But the solution, the solution to the population crisis is one that all NGOs can support. The solution is simply to ensure that all women have a universal voluntary family planning, education, and economic independence. Yes. <clears throat> when women are empowered, fertility rates dive to replacement rates or below. This would help to reverse the ecological destruction wreaked since 1900 when the population was just one and a half billion. Okay. Uh, it, okay, guys. I mean, I'm going to go back with the story, but I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I, I finally had enough of it. You know, my very first interview on Collapse Chronicles, the reason I created this channel was when I got a, when somebody else uh, on the internet who, Sharon, who we don't talk about on this channel uh, scored an interview with Paul Ehrlich. Paul Ehrlich, you know, obviously one of my biggest heroes on the planet. I've been waiting for years to interview this man. You can find the interview still on here, my interview with Paul. And uh, so, you know, I'm very starstruck during the interview. I created an entire new YouTube channel. And what does Paul Ehrlich 
start talking about the solution to the overpopulation problem is the empowerment of women. Okay. Amplification and disclaimer. I am 100% in favor of the empowerment of women. Okay. I am 100% in favor of ensuring that all women have a universal right to voluntary family planning, education, and economic independence. If I may, is there anything unambiguous about what I just said? I am in 100% support of that. And I do believe that it will <coughs> help. Okay. It will help. There's, it certainly can't hurt. Well, it can hurt. Actually, uh, thinking about it now, it can, it, you know, the, the, the women, empowered women who have fewer children, there's probably, if you were really to uh, be a, count the beans in this one, you would find that the fewer children of empowered women consume more than the many per child than the many children of unempowered women. This is a this is a wild guess on my part that the children of empowered women have a bigger carbon and environmental footprint, ecological footprint than the per capita children of unempowered women, but we're not, not, not even, not even going there right now. Okay. Uh, we, we've got to call out that this is bullshit, that, e, e, that even though it helps, it's like saying, uh, you, you know, oh, uh, I, I, I mean, what, what is a good, uh, uh, analogy to acting like empowering women is going to cure the, the, the number one biggest problem on the planet. It's, uh, uh, you know, like drinking orange juice uh, will help you fight a cold, okay? It will help. But anybody who believes that empowering women, and, and I don't care if Paul Ehrlich is listening to this at this point, uh, Paul Ehrlich, I don't think for one minute believes that empowering women is going to solve the number one biggest uh, problem on planet Earth, bar none. I don't buy it for a second. It's right in there with these bright green lies that we're going to save the planet with windmills and solar panels. I'm going to put empowering women uh, in the same list of bright green lies with windmills and, uh, and solar power to save the planet. That's a lie. It's a myth. At best, it's a myth. At worst, it's a lie. It is a cop-out. It's a total cop-out. The person writing this article, it's a cop-out. It's every much of a cop-out is the failed cop-out 27 meetings. Empowering women is not going to do the trick. That simple. Deal with it. Deal with it. Throw it out the window. You have my permission to throw it out the window. You can support it, cheer it on, but not believe for one damn second that empowering women is going to save the planet from the single biggest problem facing the planet. Okay. I just had to add that. Now we can get back to the story. With that understanding, 
Okay. The main opponents of such rights, I am not an opponent. I am the biggest defender of such rights. The main opponents of such rights are patriarchal religions and increasingly in the global north, nativist populist. These include those in the US, Hungary, and Poland where women's reproductive rights are targeted by the populist racist far right, which is exactly what they are. Donald Trump cut off US funding of the United Nations Population Fund, the UN body promoting access for women to voluntary family planning, and uh, now the Sunak-Johnson government followed Trump with a devastating 85% cut. So, uh, you know, they're talking about, uh, you know, it used to be that the U.S. and Britain at least used to send uh, as part of their aid, and we're talking about aid to Africa, number one here, is where they're talking about that Donald Trump cut off uh, family planning and birth control funding to, uh, to Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, as did the Sunak Johnson government, you know, the independence from England. So there's, this is geared toward an English audience. All right. To mark 8 billion day, we asked political parties and leading environmental NGOs two questions. Question number one, the IPCC says global GDP per capita and population growth are the strongest drivers of CO2 emissions. What actions do you think the government should take? And then secondarily, they ask, being from the independent, do you back a reversal of the UK funding cut to the UNFPA? Okay. Of those that answered, <laughs> which probably I wish they had told how many how many environmental organizations they asked and how many answered. My guess is a tiny few of them even answered. Of those that answered, all, as in every single one of them, omitted the P word, with the exception of Friends of the Earth, which called it a Distraction. Yes, Friends of the Earth told us, quote, the main drivers of environmental destruction and climate breakdown are overconsumption and demand for energy. Focusing on population distracts from the need for action by rich countries to cut emissions. Quote, and close quote, but at least it did state that it was against all aid cuts without mentioning the UNFPA. Friends of the Earth, I love that name, Friends of the Earth, talking about how, uh, talking about the, the, the word population is a distraction to being a friend of the Earth. Quote, a sustainable society is about more than fairer sharers of resources. It's about sharing power, protecting rights and freedoms. All women and girls should have equal access to reproductive health care, which is a fundamental human right." Close quote. Friend of the Earth website has a bizarre policy stating, and we quote, quoting Friends of the Earth, quote, no reliable scientific estimates of sustainable human population size exist, and such estimates would be provisional and technology dependent. Only focusing on population growth is not 
the most effective or just approach, close quote. Back to the person writing this story, but nobody says that population is the only thing that needs to be addressed. The problem is the opposite. Almost nobody is advocating action on one of the top two drivers of climate and ecological destruction. Okay, positively, Greenpeace did support the call to reverse the UK cut to the UN FPA, but was at pains to say this was due to support for women's rights rather than any impact it has on population. It said, quote, giving women control over their reproductive cycle is crucial to their well-being and their communities. We urge the UK government to rethink its cuts to the UNFPA. We support women's reproductive rights on their own merits, not just as a means to an end. Close quote. Okay, well, not surprisingly, that's the only environmental NGO that addressed the IPCC report's finding on both GDP and population was Population Matters, whose patrons include David Attenborough and Jane Goodall. Chief Executive Robin Maynard of Population Matters told us, quote, the UNFPA cuts are devastating, showing indifference to the world's poorest. 270 million women worldwide lack access to or choice over safe family planning, a basic human right. Cruelly, the cuts mean millions more unintended pregnancies and backstreet abortions and thousands more maternal deaths, close quote. And of course, the, I mean, I don't have the numbers, but I guarantee you uh, those, you know, when Donald, the, the aide that Donald Trump killed and Joe Biden sure as hell is not reinstated. I guarantee you that Joe Biden has no more interest than Donald Trump of uh, helping sub-Saharan African women get access to birth control that you better believe that uh, these cuts from the U.S. mean millions more unintended pregnancies. Uh, Maynard added, quote, universal access to family planning and education for girls, according to Project Drawdown, would save more emissions than all offshore and onshore wind power combined, close quote. Of course, that is setting a pretty low bar, even if, uh, assuming that, that comment is probably true, and it probably is, it doesn't mean anything. When you sway, you know, when you're setting that kind of a bar, anyway. Okay, how about the World Wildlife Fund? The World Wildlife Fund reply omit, omitted any reference to population, choosing instead to urge more action by the UK government on emissions. Labor, I guess the Labor Party failed to provide any reply at all. The Lib Dems, we're talking about the English Lib Dems did reply saying, quote, UK foreign aid is a matter of life and death. The government callously refuses to recognize this and the cuts to UNFPA are yet another example. Women's rights remain under attack globally and the government is abandoning them. Close quote. Again, they, the liberal Dems, <clears throat> otherwise known as lefties, left out 
the P word. Okay, so our little background. Since 1975, our global population has doubled from 4 billion to 8 billion, and carbon emissions have more than doubled from 17 billion tons of CO2 per year in 1975 to 37 billion tons per year. Now, as our numbers have exploded, we have destroyed more than 70% of our fellow species populations since 1970. Millions of women and men all over the world are already limiting family sizes as they realize the existential destructiveness of the population explosion. I have no idea what uh, hopium uh, that clueless moron is for writing that sentence. Millions of women and men all over the world are already limiting family sizes as they realize the ex existential destructiveness of the population explosion. Please. So, please email your Tory or Labor MP and demand they support restoration of the UNFPA funding so that all women have the right to voluntarily do the same. And uh, we're going to have a real brain teaser of a pop quiz. On a planet of now 8 billion people, how many comments on a planet of 8 billion people did that story generate? If your answer was zero comments, not one person out of 8 billion, not even that dude Humpty Dumpty bothered uh, responding to that. Uh, not one human being out of 8 billion uh, left one comment on that story. Anyway, so get out there and uh, think of things to be thankful for. I'm thankful for my little dog. And I am thankful that uh, I made the greatest decision of my life at age 22 by joining the voluntary human extinction movement by getting myself sterilized. As Les Unite did at age 25. So if you are of breeding age, and have not gotten yourself sterilized, get out there and get yourself sterilized while you still can. Happy Thanksgiving! Bye guys.